all right guys let's get started so these are the features which we are going to see these are the top 10 features which was introduced in java 11 The first one is local variable where we are going to use where inside the lambda parameters and then we're going to see http parameters uh, http client and then nest based access control and then dynamic class file constants how are we going to access it as i said like i'm going to show you like uh, the no operations for page character and also how are we going to use single file source code programs and uh, there are some uh, additional methods they added for flight recorder with respect to jv monitoring and uh, garbage character and then thread local handshakes and also the de depreciation of uh, JavaScript engine. We get started one by one. So first I will tell you the concept, then I will show you the code. So first one is, so this is basically allowing the use of where in the Lambda expression. So earlier in Java 9 or Java 10, when the where was introduced, so we are not able to use where inside the Lambda expression. Now we can able to do it. So I'm going to show you how actually, but before that you guys see here, where A, where B. So this is what like you can use it. Okay, so I'm going to show the screen right now where I'm going to show you the IntelliJ where I want to write the code so here I'm going to start writing a class which is for a demo instead I'm having public static oil right so this is a typical way of writing it right so now we need to know how to write uh, the where with respect to jalala okay so now i'm going to show you guys how we are going to write a function with respect to this one if you guys see here <coughs> excuse me yeah this one i'm going to start on the program so here i'm having like a by function add here i'm just added where and where okay so now let's wait for this program to get executed start. so yeah it's getting started for the time still building this application so actually i'm applying this one like three and five so basically this three and five will be taken as integer here for a and b let's wait Program. yeah it's still building it let's wait guys so the intelligence is taking some time now i don't know why. um not like uh, eclipse eclipse was a little faster but intelligence is taking time but i hope like this will be. and now seeing the output shortly so build actually successfully completed now uh yeah here you go so now we can able to see the value as 8 right so which means going forward starts from java 11 onwards we can able to use air in the lambda expression as well okay now let's move on to the next topic where we are going to see about we are going to about http client so http client also it was introduced in java 9 but basically they added some more uh, methods and functionalities to particular uh, which they can able to make a request http request from java to the server right so in olden days we are using like http url connection right completely removed and now we are having like flexible solution to use http from java itself so this is like basically a reactive uh, programming approach it is using it and wherein like you can like asynchronous communication you can use http or websocket or anything okay so this is the code set like i'm going to show you this one as well now let me share my screen regarding this so i am going to write a program uh, our class let's say http no program is a class and inside that i am going to show you how i am going to write a class for http okay so basically what i need to do here first of all we need to build the http request right how to build it http request there is a method how to use it to build it okay so if you guys see here http request dot new builder and then you can get method and then build we can able to get the request object so from the request object we have to call the api to get the output right so for that first let me define the output as null and then the response as null and then i want to do something like okay i want to try calling this one and then i want to store it and i want to 
read the response okay? and I want to print it out here. So let me go ahead and then run this program. So I just uh, simply we are calling this API. So I'm just running this program to show you guys like how it is going to uh, get back the response back because they just want to build the response uh, here in this case of response body, right? It is going to show you the entire response, uh, the text message, right? Whatever you're getting with it, it is going to display it over here. So as long as it is giving the right response, then the API is working fine. Okay. So this is taking some time. I like it's taking time. Yeah. If you can see here, you can see here, the web uh, example.com, right? The entire website has been, the entire HTML document has been read from the example.com, which means now my standalone Java application is able to talk to example.com which is a server uh, site right where it is going to talk it and then able to get the response back and the subject and body, whatever we are getting back from the response we are able to and navigate over all right now let's move on to the next topic which is something like um nest based access control list what is nest based access control list basically we usually able to access only private members within the same class right so but they want to have more control over here which means accessing each other's private members which means let's say if you have two or three classes combined together and group it as a nested classes then within these classes like within these each other classes we can able to use the private members as such okay that's the beauty of it and uh, the way how uh, i want to demonstrate here is like i want to explain this one in a deeper way um let's say i want to have one more coding um so here i would say no java file uh the nest demo okay nest demo now now i want to show you how we are going to create a method here okay to create okay now we are going to see how are we going to create a method right so we are having like outer class and inner class so that we can able to tell like whether it is able to access the private variables of outer class in the inner class or not okay so i'm going to just copy and paste over I already wrote the code for this time so far uh considering the time i just as like just outer class and inner class that's it okay and now all we need to do here is we need to just execute from our main method right which is the main class right so this is the way that we are going to call their service so they, their service offers like this right like outer class uh, there is no package second thing is i think our class name is but master demo right so now if you can see here the main method i'm able to call uh the outer method as with outer class and inner class and i'm trying to access the data which means like i'm able to use the http um i mean uh, the client um the nest demo which i'm able to get uh the private members of uh, outer class to the inner class i hope this is very clear right? so now let's move on to the next one where we are going to see about topic which is dynamic class by constants okay so what is this basically it is during the runtime of an execution of a program it can able to create and link the new kind of constant code we are going to see this how it actually works uh basically it actually happens at the runtime okay like, so like the dynamic uh, process of execution is like but that's what they uh, try to do it so uh for this let me show the code um find this code i'm going to write a new code for this source new class dynamic okay okay so now you guys see here i'm going to show you the dynamic class so guys like if you guys see here they're having always thing out so now i want to make sure i want to just create one static final int array not array like int okay it is something you see here this is a traditional way of defining a constant now the what i was telling here is we are going to do dynamic right how are we going to do it so dynamically if you want to execute it then let's say you're having a main method 
correct we should have some and then what we should do here is let's say if i'm declaring an array array equal to new int of max underscore size now now talk about new array this new array size i'm not defining it okay it is taking it from the max size okay so basically this demo class has max size right this and it's going to take it from oh sorry guys i already thinking like it's all right uh what is this one this one is uh this uh, is right basically if you guys see here size is determined at the front okay so the size is determined at the front end um take this one here so basically what happens is here the traditional way of doing a uh, constant uh, size is by having like this right finally in max is here i with this time static final they have come out head of here you go all right let me go and pro for this um just to be built meanwhile i will explain the second one um for this one is they have also introduced something called uh, no operations garbage collector basically uh, if you don't want to perform any mini mem any memory operation or okay, it's just a matter of like uh, saving that like using that okay okay yeah if you guys see here the code has been executed without okay now i am going to show you the methods how we are using for okay see here For garbage collection okay let me share my go back to the code here right. so like we are thinking like we can able to use no operations uh garbage collector in, in case like we don't want to do handling okay that is also possible and what is this launch single file source code system is something but um you can also launch a single file source code program and directly from that like we can able to communicate Like we can compile and then right. So that's a beauty of it. So you can directly say like Java hello. And uh, another one is like like a flight recorder, which is basically kind of like providing a load, load and continuous monitoring and the prof profiling. Okay, these are the very uh, basic things which the JVM in flight recorder. And then uh, this also we can able to start it like this. It's all just a configuration guys. And also low latency garbage collection thing, but G. easy okay so basically it is helps for uh, understanding about uh, heaps and you know, how much latency we are getting it so this is basically to enhance the future of uh, performance wise okay this also just we need to see it and uh, thread local is a class in java which actually do some handshake so here it is to improve the performance of a local thread uh, class what they did is like um, they are actually uh, synchronizing their actions one by one like uh, by eventually it's all in improving the performance So here also, this also like kind of like you can just create a thread pool and then just use it. Okay, so final one is like they depreciate the JavaScript engine, right? As I told you, JavaScript engine was de deprecating in um, Java 11. JavaScript engine was getting in Java 11, which means uh, they are trying to encourage the use of alternative ones. Okay, uh, let's say Graal VM, right? And it is having some performance issue, but still uh, they are trying to uh, avoid uh, the other ones and they want. something right something new right and um, even uh, this also depreciated like um, nashon nashon is also depreciated and so that like developers will be removed in future version means like something like in future versions of java so basically this is like a migration to alternate all the jvm uh, javascript engines okay guys 
So this basically, uh, these are the main uh, important features that we should understand with respect to um, Java 11. And if in case of anything, uh, uh, anyone having any issues or something, just please post your comments and I will be more than happy to assist. And if you guys uh, think about something like new topics to start from Java, let me know what is your preference. I am, I will prefer and then I will try to post videos about it. And uh, if you guys are new to your channel, please consider subscribe to it. And also, if you guys like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. And don't forget to hit the notification button. I will see you in the next interesting video guys. Thank you.